Your first venture for open data was openly local, and that was government uh, government data, public data, and to do with local councils. Um, that was your first major experience. How did it go? How was the setup, and what difficulties um, did you come across? Um, well, when I did openly local um, two and a bit years ago, now I hadn't actually expected to be doing it. It wasn't. I hadn't got a great goal of opening up local data or um, uh, writing a whole website for for, for local data. Um, I just wanted to do some data journalism, and I thought I'd do it on local authority data. Um, but then I discovered there wasn't any. Not only was there not any, there was not not even basic data, such as who the councillors were. In fact, there wasn't even a uh, a list of councils in the UK that you could download as as data. Um, I tried to get various organisations, you know, my society and so on, interested in doing something about it. They were all too busy with doing other things. So I sort of did it myself, uh, expecting, um, uh, expecting not much really, other than maybe getting told off by the councils, because all the councils at that time had got a um, had got things on their website saying this is copyright, such and such a council may not be reused without prior written consent. So given that I was, I'd written a program to, to scrape um, the council websites, um, which was against their copyright notice, I expected them to send me a takedown notice and that would have been fine because we'd have then been able to have that debate about why this information wasn't available. Um, actually that didn't happen. We started off with about a dozen councils. What did happen was uh, that um, a couple of councils contacted us and said, we like what you're doing, will you start scraping us um, and, uh, and add, add us to the, uh, to the website. And I got contacted by the cabinet office who said, yeah, love what you're doing, come and sit on this panel advising us about opening up local data. So despite the fact that we're breaching the you know the stated terms and conditions of the council websites, the reaction from, from government generally was um, uh, was incredibly positive, um, which meant that we then had to grow and do more stuff and do it seriously, and um, uh, and it's grown from, from that twelve councils and basic data about um, who the councillors are to being you know, 150, 160 councils. Um, millions of financial transactions, billions of pounds worth of spending, ordnance survey, sorry, um, uh, Office of National Statistics, data, um, meeting minutes and all sorts of all sorts of other things. So it's just basically, you know, there was no great plan. It's just grown from, from, from that point. And your next venture is hugely ambitious, open corporates. How has that been different? And clearly the challenges are going to be very, very different as well. Yeah, one of the, there are, when you're doing, um, when you're opening up data, and when people ask what I do, I sort of say that I, I open up data. Um, uh, sometimes whether people like it or not, but um, I open up data, um, and that sounds quite simple, but there are, it, it, um, there are a number of steps involved in doing that. The first is, is actually understanding um, what you're trying to get. You know, so is a district councillor the same as a county councillor? You know, the areas they represent, what does that mean? What does membership of a committee mean? What are these types of committees? So what is actually understanding the what you're trying to get in the situation, the domain, if you like, in technical terms? Um, my background is actually as a journalist. I, you know, I came for this data side, you know, completely comparatively and programming comparatively late. Um, one is understanding that, that situation. The second is is then figuring out how to do it uh, and how to pull, how to get that data out of the website. And the third thing is then how to present that and represent that to people in a way that makes it useful to them. We had a problem with openly local, or not a problem, but a, uh, a job to do, which was um, importing the local authority spending data. Local authorities are publishing spending data over five hundred pounds. And we wanted to match that against companies uh, and, and other entities, other, other councils, charities, and so on. 
Um, we needed essentially to have a database of, of, of companies in order to do that match. We started off with using the company's house, but actually then you end up with, then you find that there's some Irish companies, there's some Ireland companies and so on. And you start talking to other people and you realize that this, this thing of being able to match um, uh, names of companies to, uh, to actual companies is, 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 is something that's not just about data. It's not even about just about UK data, it's about global data. And particularly as companies are more increasingly not single entities, but a, a web of legal entities all around the world, then then you need what you really need is you need a guy called Rob McKinnon, who co-founded Open Corporate. We basically decided that, uh, nevertheless, we were going to do this, and, and and that brings in those standard questions. For example, understanding the the, the domain, understanding the uh, the area you're trying to you're trying to get open data for. What is a company? You know, is it is uh, is a company uh, just a limited company? Is a limited par uh, partnership company? What about uh, in um, uh, a business name, for example, when when company registers business names and it's a sole trader? What are these sorts of issues? And and obviously that varies. You know, there are issues in understanding that from a UK perspective, but that varies from country to country as well, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. You know, different U.S. states have different ways of, of um, uh, or, or di uh, different rules for registering, and also they they call things different. Uh, uh, they call the companies and the company types, and for example, things like directors or shareholders, or stakeholders, members. They call them all sorts of different things. So that job of just understanding what you're trying to do, when you scale that from one country, you can scale that to a couple of countries. But when you are scaling that to um, 50, 100 countries, 100 jurisdictions, you know, uh, a couple of hundred jurisdictions. In the US, each state um, is responsible for registering companies. So that's 52 jurisdictions already. Um, when you scale it to that sort of uh, size, then you can't do that on your own. You need the community to help you with that. And also, uh, when it comes down to, to scraping that, you know, you can scrape um, one of the things that we'd discovered with... Um, uh, open and local, we found some ways of, of scraping in a way that didn't take too much time, that did scale, essentially. So how do we apply that to, to things like uh, the corporate sector as well? So it's a huge job. Um, it's one that I think could only really be done with the involvement of the community. Um, it's one that actually we would want the community, because the whole point about this is to make this data available to the community um, to allow anybody to be able to search um, uh, across jurisdictions for companies so that if you're a company in South Africa and you're doing business with a company in the UK, then you can actually see the status of that company. You can actually find out whether there are any Gazette notices. This sort of information, you know, let alone the, the com understanding and mapping out the complex network of, of, of multinationals and so on, this is absolutely crucial if we're going to uh, ever get a handle on the corporate world. And with your experience, is there any advice you can give to people on a model, um, regardless of what type of data and what type of project that they're doing, that involves scraping a lot of data, that involves building databases, and involves working with a community? What should you always do, and what should stay flexible depending on the story that you're trying to tell and the data that you're using, and the community that you're building? Um... For me, the community is, is absolutely the critical issue. Um, and you need tools that allow you to do that. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know, the key tools that we're using in, um, on, on open corporates in, in order to allow us to do that, um, the back-end stuff that we're using on open corporates, I mean, we use uh, uh, the, the, uh, the website itself and actually all the... Uh, the data handling, the importing and so on is actually uh, written in Ruby using um, Ruby on Rails framework. And, and, but it's, it's basically all open source software, um, MySQL database, you know, um, uh, Solo as the, as the search engine and so on. Um, but, but one is that you need to um, 
uh, you need to be able to uh, ha get this community working and that, let it work, uh, lower the barriers so that they can help you um, in a way that doesn't require them to jump through too many hoops. Uh, so we started off with three countries, um, uh, Bermuda, the UK and, and Jersey. And then we expanded to the US states and we were doing this ourselves. For me, I just had a, a, a moment of, uh, of clarity, if you like, um, where having used Scraper Wiki for a little bit in the early days um, uh, and, and found it interesting but, um, but not, not, uh, not stable enough. Because for me, the, the, the clarity was when I actually thought, well, if, we, if Scraper Wiki was, was uh, you know, was stable, was doing all these things that I wanted it to do, then actually Scraper Wiki would be an ideal way of managing this sort of stuff. So I did some test scrapers on it, expecting to have to spend quite some time on it because I'd really only done it when it had first launched and found it incredibly good. Um, you know, scrapers that I thought was probably, were probably going to take me you know, a, a half a day, it took me an hour to do. Um, I found the tools incredibly good. And, uh, and what it meant was I could put sample scrapers up there saying, this is how we want the data. This is how, you know, here are some patterns in order to, um, in order to, uh, for you to follow to see how I've scraped here. This is how we want the data. And then it's just a question of taking the, 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 uh, the CSV files that Scraper Wiki produces and importing those. So for me, the critical things were, one is that we needed, um, uh, in order for the community to work, uh, and most of the community interaction is, is via email. I mean, so there's nothing new technology about that. There's a bit via Twitter and so on. Um, but a lot of it is by, by email. For me, the critical stage was um, uh, being able to uh, write scrapers on the web um, uh, and to be able to, for other people to be able to see those scrapers, understand what we were doing, understand how we wanted the data, give some patterns about how we how the data should be represented, give some patterns about how to uh, get over certain aspects of, of, of scraping and so on. And, and that suddenly lowers the barriers by quite a long way. When you're doing a community project, one of that critical things, as we've seen from GitHub, we've seen from other tools, one of that thing is the visibility of, of the tool, of, of showing what you've done, showing you're working, means that you know everybody is standing on giants not that the stuff that i've done is makes me a giant but it means that you know i've looked at uh, you know people can look at my code i've looked at other people's code and you say oh that's a neat trick of doing it i'll do it that way or that's a really good way of doing it and uh, and to me that visibility of the code of the scrapers and the fact that people can you can um organize a community and gives them a consistent tool and allow them to write in either Python, Ruby, or um, uh, or PHP. To me, that basically it, it allows Scraper Wiki to be part of the pipeline and meet for, for us not to have to, to to worry. We would never have got, you know, for example, uh, Malta or you know, it would have taken us probably another year before we got around to writing a scraper for uh, Indian companies, for example. So all of these things. Just made you know were parts of the jigsaw that's allowed us to do, uh, you know what we've done, which is we've now got 28 jurisdictions, over 22 million companies. Um, there are another probably half a dozen jurisdictions waiting to be imported and waiting for us to do little things uh, to do and do some validation checks and so on. Um, so I would expect within the next three months is to get to 30 million companies and probably to have somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 US states in there. So I think that's a pretty significant um, effort for essentially what's a micro startup. It's a company, but uh, we, you know, it's a tiny company. And, and we've done something which I don't think has ever been done in the world before.